This is an exhibition devoted to Edward Hopper's oil paintings and watercolors and a number of his prints. It's the first comprehensive exhibition of Hopper's work to be seen in Washington in over 25 years. Hopper was born in Nyack, New York in 1882, but he really was a New York City person. He, he lived all of his life virtually in New York. The Hopper that we know today, perhaps many people are most familiar with these images of, of urban scenes in, in New York. Ironically, in light of the fame of his later uh, scenes of urban America, uh, his first great success really came through watercolors of New England subjects. Hopper did spend most of his life living in New York City, lived in Greenwich Village. Hopper's New York is a very different place. It's recognizably New York or any great American city, but it's a kind of anonymous place, often very quiet, often empty, sometimes with people, sometimes not. Did Hopper focus on the new, the modern, the today? There's always a sense that the buildings he shows, the scenes he shows, have been there for a while. They're not new. They're, they're places that people have inhabited and have become familiar. The places that Hopper was drawn to in his paintings in, in New York were anonymous places often, or, or places that weren't necessarily the, the sort of immediate thing you'd think of as a subject for a painting. Hotel rooms or lobbies, restaurants, not fancy restaurants, or rather plain looking shop fronts or rows of buildings on streets where you see nothing that's any kind of landmark that would tell you where they were. But Hopper seemed to love them. He seemed to be drawn to their quiet beauty. A good example is, is the wonderful painting of 1929 called Chop Suey, which shows a corner of a restaurant very like one that we know Hopper and his wife Jo liked to go to. It was a second floor walk-up establishment, probably very inexpensive where you got nice, good Chinese food, and Hopper shows us, and he shows a couple of people at the tables, but it's, it's again, nothing fancy at all. Hopper's, I think, essential kind of grasp of the experience of living in a city like New York was really based on that notion of how we experience interior and exterior space. We live and work in these interior spaces. We move between them by going outdoors, but we're always aware of them, looking into the window of a shop, or perhaps catching a furtive glance of somebody who doesn't know we're looking at them. Hopper specifically mentioned that, that many rides on the elevated railroad, the urban transportation system that had the trains riding above the street level, that in many of those rides he had glimpsed into windows in offices and apartments and homes and whatever uh, as the train moved by and he would catch these scenes and, and he said that then your imagination could sort of work with the subject. Hopper often painted the city not at at noontime or in the glare of an afternoon light, but in the early morning or in the early evening. And there were a number of things that made that appealing for him. One of them, he clearly loved the play of light and shadow that he could get when the sun was low, either in the morning or in the afternoon or early evening. You see that in the wonderful painting called Early Sunday Morning of 1930, a row of just sort of anonymous storefronts, the sun casting these elongated shadows from a barber pole and a hydrant where it gives us almost kind of uh, again a sense of, of sort of a longing for uh, something that we don't know quite what it is. There's a loneliness there. There are no people present and that's another thing that Hopper seemed to, to like was in the early morning or the early evening finding places where there was a kind of quiet, a lull really in the city and House at Dusk of, of 1935 also shows us Another interest of his is in that wonderful contrast that he pulls in that painting and in others between the fading natural light, the sun going dim behind that wonderful group of green trees in the park, presumably, and a street light coming on down at the lower right, or the lights that illuminate the rooms in the building that we're looking into. Hopper's paintings have, have since his own time and, and continue to be today characterized as expressing, capturing something of a sense of loneliness or isolation. It's difficult to put into words. People have struggled with this in, in trying to explain the, the effect that his paintings have. But indeed, it is true that, that oftentimes there are no people in his paintings, or even perhaps more poignantly, there are often people who don't seem to interact, or the nature of the interaction between them remains unclear to us. In the painting, Office at Night, 1940, we see a man at his desk, working behind him and to the side is presumably his assistant, a woman in an impossibly tight dress who's pulling something out of a filing cabinet and looking over towards uh, perhaps him or perhaps some papers on the floor. And they seem to be, as the title implies, working at night, late. We glimpse them from outside as we pass by. 
and we imagine that there's something going on, but what it is, Hopper never ever put in motion a story that came to any foregone conclusion. He himself said, that's just it, that's the beginning of the story and, and nothing more is, is meant. And I think he knew exactly what that allowed for viewers, and that was the possibility of a kind of um, embodiment of, of our own ideas about our own lives, our own stories. It wasn't being told a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I think part of what he looked for in these images was that possibility of identification. We've all experienced loneliness and isolation. And indeed, certainly one of the conditions of modern life in a great city like New York was literally how you could be alone in a crowd. And his paintings give voice to that in a way I think it's, it's um, again, uh, almost impossible to articulate in words. Hopper himself once said something to the effect that if I could say it in words, I wouldn't need to paint. Hopper is often referred to as the quintessential American artist. And I think a number of things are perhaps meant by that characterization. First, perhaps most obviously, his subject was America. The houses, the urban scenes, the people, recognizably America, and not grand America, but what people in his day and we continue today think of as a kind of common America, the, the everyday. Hopper was an avid fan of the cinema, and indeed we see that in a very lovely painting called New York Movie of 1939, where we see the interior of a dark theater, but interestingly enough we can't see any clarity of the image on the screen, so we just know we're in a movie theater, and the only figure that we really can see well at all, other than the shadowy figures in the audience, is the usherette who's leaning against the wall at the right, seemingly lost in her own thoughts, and it's a wonderful kind of dichotomy between the cinema, the place of a kind of escapism, leave the ordinary world and go into this other world, and yet then this other world of her thoughts and her own private dreams or hopes or, or worries. Hopper was also influenced by cinematography, how sets were, were created in early films. He was fascinated with film noir, with gangster movies, and in amazing ways he also then, because his art took on qualities that seemed to be cinematic, began to influence filmmakers, particularly in the later 1940s and the 1950s. Nighthawks of 1940 is one of Hopper's most famous, or perhaps indeed his most famous image. It shows a scene of a cafe, a diner at night, and we're looking from outside in the darkness, looking into the illuminated space, and that's all it gives us, and yet it's gone on, and it was instantly recognized when it went on view in 1940 and was acquired by the Art Institute of Chicago as a real masterpiece. Many people know the painting, many people may have seen it, but this is the first time that it's been in Washington ever, so this is a wonderful opportunity. If you want to see a masterpiece among masterpieces, this is the exhibition that presents that opportunity.